The highest flying rocket of 2021, called Staten, was built by a group called Propulse NTNU. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Ask Hovick, who is the chief mechanical engineer on the project. So let's find out a bit about what it took for Propulse to reach for the sky. We started up in 2018, and at that point, we started sort of two simultaneous projects. One was we started working on a hybrid uh, motor, and we at the same time just uh, started working on a rocket for the SA Cup. During that year, they worked really hard and came up with the rocket. So that was sort of the, the ground zero, the first time anyone had ever made a rocket and kind of sucked, but it was a rocket, right? And it flew on the SA Cup, uh, admittedly with uh, uh, some sort of fin failure. Um, so it just crashed. The year after, we continued with the hybrid motor and sort of tried to combine it with an actual rocket. But hybrid motor development is hard. So we ended up having to sort of move the, the motor hybrid motor off the vehicle and just go with the COTS replacement, like a, a solid motor. Um, but as you can imagine, it's a bit bad to, to sort of change your um, design so quickly. So uh, it ended up being like a um, difficult to complete project and then COVID hit pretty much in the middle of it, uh, which terminated it, the, the project more or less. So then we're sort of back with hmm, how do we continue this organization the best way? Because we want to be ambitious, but we also want to make something that works. And so that's when we just we basically decided to try to make the best rocket we could. Whenever there was like a question, do we go for a fancy solution or like a, a secure solution? We would always try to go for the secure one, even though everybody sort of naturally gravitates towards the, the fancy solutions. You know? I think that actually that's sort of one of the engineering principles you need to be really consistent on because making even like the simplest mechanism work reliably requires quite a lot of insight. Like just an arm moving reliably is gonna need a really, really well-designed system. And uh, in, in our case, even when we added all the redundancy, we did, we had like three flight computers and two of them were in charge of deploying stuff. All three failed in different ways, which is like, it blows my mind sort of, like it really, did, did that really happen? Even though you, you think, think you, you think you think about everything that you really haven't. Uh, and that's why I think it's it's important to be on the simple side always and not like making more failure points. But that's what uh, ultimately became the set in rocket. One ignition. Yes! Woo! To see. Look at that. Way back before I chose my direction, like to, to study engineering at all, I um, I sat down and I was like, "What's the things that like really inspire me? What, what do I like find interesting, and, and what kind of stuff do I naturally gravitate toward?" In my mind, there were like a couple of things. So one of them is the environment. Like I grew up in Norway. It's a beautiful country with lush nature. Even like throughout my life, I've seen that nature get challenged by sort of all the human activity. Some of the spaces like I grew up have been laid under asphalt and like the trees I, I used to climb have been like chopped down and stuff. And it, it sort of hit me in a, a bit of an, a bad way. So one of the things I, I care about is trying to protect what's like the natural world, world we have. The other thing that I was sort of passionate about was space. I always, space is the, the ultimate future playground. It, it's where we're going to be uh, in the future. And it's for some reason very attractive just to look at the, the solar system and the planets and thinking about where we could go. So I, I figured that um, one place I might be helpful if I'm both interested in sort of technical stuff and environment is to work with some sort of like to use engineering skills to help protect the environment in some way. And admittedly, uh, rockets aren't uh, very like environmentally friendly by design, 
but I think there is a lot of improvement to be made. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what shall we say, undeveloped industry, you know? The, 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 the potential for rockets is gigantic. Like, if, you, if we ever get any sort of space, like industry in space, then launches are gonna uh, rev up by a lot. And also, the, the like, with the reusable vehicles, the, the amount of launches is gonna skyrocket. And if you don't do this in an environmentally friendly way, you're gonna end up with another problem. And Propulse was sort of one way to, to get into aerospace. And because I love rockets for their sort of symbolic value of exploring space and being curious, I, I really enjoyed working with them for, for a bit.